we live in an age where we're just surrounded with lots of information. How do we make the most of it, make the use of it and benefit from it? Let's talk about that. Hey, this is a Coco Nomad here. And on this channel, I talk about financial and location independence, and I share tips, tricks, and techniques to help you make a living and a life. Please follow along if you find this helpful or you're interested in these topics. I will continue to create videos. So let's dive into this one. And in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about advice. We are swimming in a sea of information on the internet and all these other media channels. And we're just in a constant barrage of advice, information, gurus. I am giving advice on this channel a lot of times, uh, travel advice, definitely not necessarily giving financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but I do share um, my journey and the things that I've chosen to do and how I do them. And maybe some of these things will benefit you. So I thought it would be a good time to sort of talk about how even with what I'm saying, you should evaluate advice and how I go about making the most of the things that I hear. Now, I often go down rabbit holes, of articles, YouTube videos every week. I'm doing that right now. I am in a constant marathon of watching videos and articles about options, trading and investing. I've been doing this now for like the last week and a half. And this is common for me. I find something interesting. I start to get into it. I instantly want to just take in all the information that I can, but it can be a bit much. And at a certain point in time, you have to start to pare that down and focus because you have to take action. And so my first point in this, in this is focus on actionable advice, the things that I can actually do. And that's where I like to go. So there's lots of these great things that I see. People have these great techniques. They have all these ideas. They've been incredibly successful, whatever they're doing. But what can I do with that? And that, first of all, should probably tie back to my own reasons for being interested in my own inner why, my own motivations, my own goals. Start there instead of just copying something that someone else did. But once I get past that and I have an understanding about where I'm going, it's still a matter of, of all of this advice. What can I do? What can I actually take action on in the realm of all these things? So then it's time to sort of take a step back, focus on those things you can take action on. And if it works for you, go for it. Absolutely. So is, as a part of that process, I'm thinking about how I can apply this because all of this advice is not necessarily cookie cutter. Great examples. I've been watching these videos where people are showing these techniques for invested in options that are safer than the things that you typically hear about, like the Wall Street bets, like moonshots and people just trying to make tons of money. Uh, but some of these more conservative strategies that while they don't bring the big bucks, they actually allow you to make steady income. And I'll talk about this in some later videos. But a lot of the examples that they give are quite frankly out of my price range. They're talking about Amazon stocks and Apple stocks and some of these other stocks that I had not even heard of with these incredible prices per share. And it's just out of reach. There's just no way monetarily I can participate in that. So I have to start thinking about how can I take those things and apply them to my situation? And which brings me to the next point, which is don't be quick to dismiss advice. Sometimes we hear some things and our instant reaction is, that's not for me. I don't want to hear that. For instance, cut your luggage in half, right? Someone says like travel and I say that all the time. I made a video that I'll share and drop in the, in the link uh, in the description about how to actually use that advice, how to unpack it and why it's useful, even if you end up never cutting your luggage in half. Uh, but instead of being quick to dismiss it, are there underlying principles that apply? Um, a great one of that is house hacking. And um, maybe you are a person that's in a financial situation, house hacking, that can get that mortgage, that can, you know, but you can be one of the roommates, right? So you can find roommates. So even if it's in an apartment, I've done this a couple of times where I've just gotten roommates. So maybe you're not house hacking in a sense to own this property long-term and help offset the cost by having roommates. But we can at least in that take that principle of dividing the cost and reducing your living costs by having roommates and then save up that additional money to put maybe towards a house or to some other financial goal. So we're just taking that and finding ways that we see the gym in the advice and there's something underneath that says, oh, there's a principle there that I can apply 
that I can make work for me. So always think about that in those terms. And then sometimes, as I mentioned with the cutting the luggage in half, sometimes there's just value in the exercise itself. Even if you don't get the outcome, you know, I did this once when training uh, for a marathon. I joined a marathon running group. I trained with them all the time. I never ran a marathon. In fact, I realized that as I was training that I didn't want to run a marathon. I was training one day. I was running a half on my own. So I ran a half marathon, no medal, no banners, no ribbon to run across or anything. And when I completed it, I realized that ah, this isn't the, the end goal that we were working towards. It wasn't something that I wanted, but the benefit was that it really made it easy for me to run 5Ks, which I love doing. So I just did that. It's like, I built up the ability in this exercise, in this process, I'm better at running 5Ks. Now it's nothing to go out and run that 5K as a part of my, at least at that time, a part of my uh, daily exercise routine. So, and then finally, there's the piece that not all advice is applicable though, and that's okay. You don't have to take all the advice. You don't have to implement all the techniques that you see. It doesn't mean that they're bad. In fact, there are a lot of times they're quite good. As I mentioned before, they just don't apply, right? So put them in the icebox. Don't beat yourself up for taking in all the information because that's part of the process. You take in a flood of information. And here's another little thing that I learned. I actually learned this in the last couple of weeks with my guitar teacher. He's throwing all of these techniques at me, right? And physically, my fingers just aren't able to do it. Like I cannot right now get my pinky finger to get four frets away, even three at this point. But he said, don't worry about that part. I'm going to just keep giving it to you. Your brain is actually putting a lot of this stuff in the ice box. Just keep doing the other techniques and the exercises. He says, what's going to happen one day is that all of those other little nuggets that I gave you are just going to come to the forefront and you're going to be playing and you're going to realize like oh wait I already put that in storage it's been there all along and now I can access it and that's an amazing thing so sometimes you see advice you can't apply things that you don't think apply to you put in the icebox let your brain let your brain do what it does let that the, the background thread and processes run and use that eventually it may come back up and be of service to you so just a little bit of advice on advice. And I hope this helped. As always, if you got value out of this, please click the like button, uh, subscribe and share if you think this would help someone else. I really, really love making these videos and I appreciate the support. It's still a young channel growing and I'm looking forward to doing more of this. As always, have an amazing day. I will talk to you next time. Cheers.